story, everyone. Welcome back to GA Fan TV. Hope the form is good. Hope the form is well. Knockout stage football is officially here, and it's officially here in the Talchin Cup as we go into the knockout rounds of the Talchin Cup. Four games to look forward to, four games to break down. It's the preliminary quarterfinals, it's the games to decide who get into the quarterfinals. Obviously, the group stages are finished now in the Talchin Cup. We know for certain how the groups have finished, and we know now who are going to be playing each other in the preliminary quarterfinals. Only four games to look at this weekend in Gaelic football. There will be a separate show out to preview this weekend's All-Ireland, or, or, or I should say the Munster Senior Hurling Final and the Leinster Senior Hurling Final. So we'll be breaking down those two matches in a separate show. We will also be looking ahead to some of the minor football that will be taking place this weekend as well. Obviously Dublin in action taking on Cork. A few other big games to look forward to as well. So yeah, here we go then. The football preview show. I suppose maybe not an action-packed preview show this time around. And maybe not the biggest counties on show you would say in terms of size or fan bases or anything of any nature. But look, we're here to break the games down as always. And uh, I'll be doing a disservice if I just ignored the games this weekend. And to be fair, there might be some interesting storylines from this weekend's games and the fact that these games are actually, like, some of these are going to be on GEA Go. It's an opportunity for the attention of Gaelic football fans who maybe aren't into hurling to put their, you know, to, to look at these matches. Um, who cares about the Champions League final? Carlo, New York, that's where it's at. So we'll remind ourselves very quickly of how the group's finished, just to remind some people who maybe aren't familiar with how the Talchin Cup has gone so far. So Group 1, you can see there some of the results on screen as well. Cavan finished top with six points, so they go straight through to the quarterfinals. Uh, the groups, how they work is that the first place teams go straight into the quarterfinals, and then the second and third place teams play a preliminary round. Obviously not in the same group, so it's not like awfully play leash uh, there is obviously a separate draw for that but yeah the second place teams are at home the third place teams are away so group one you can see there Cavan in first Offaly in second leash in third and london in fourth in group two mead finished top with six points down were in second with four points and tipperary finished in third with two points now it is a little bit confusing in some ways because it is just the best third place teams that go through Tipperary, unfortunately, with a negative score difference of minus 28, and with the fact that they had just two points on the board, meant that they were the worst of the third place sides. So, unfortunately for Tipperary, they didn't progress. Group 3 looks a little like this you've got Limerick on top with four points, Carlo in second with four points, Longford do progress with two points, and Wicklow, despite winning a game, do miss out and uh, they finish with two points in last. And Group 4, Antrim finished with three wins from three. Sensational campaign for Andy McEntee's men. Fermanagh finished in second with three points and Wexford in third with three points as well. Whereas Leitrim finished bottom with nothing. And so this is how things look then. So you've got Offaly against Wexford, Fermanagh against Leash, Down versus Longford and Carlo versus New York. There will be a separate draw for the quarterfinals. As we know, as we said there, four sides already in the quarterfinals. Cavan, Mead, Limerick and Antrim. All of those four sides will have home advantage. So, yeah, let's get into it then. Offaly versus Wexford, first of all, happening in uh, in Tullamore. Definitely one of the more interesting games uh, this weekend, in my opinion. Just with the fact that I think this game could be incredibly even. And like uh, it's, it, it's kind of mad how Gaelic football or how this year's championship has worked in the All-Ireland stage. But also in the Talchin Cup stage because... Like, things change so quickly. Like, Offaly would have been red-hot favourites for this game just a couple of weeks ago. Whereas now, with the fact that Offaly have struggled a little bit, and Wexford seems to be on an upward trajectory, it's not impossible for Wexford to actually win this game. And let's not forget, in the Leinster Championship last year, Wexford actually beat Offaly in Tullamore in a shock result. Definitely a result that very much uh, surprised a lot of people, um, as Offaly were going in as a side relegate from Division 2, and Wexford were going in as a side who couldn't even get out of Division 4. But with Wexford, you obviously have a you know standout forward who's been there for God knows how long in Ben Brosnan. I mean, I remember this guy playing against Dublin in the Leinster final in 2011. Here he is, still shooting the lights out, one goal and a point the last day. But in fairness to Wexford, the likes of Dara Brooks, the likes of Robbie Brooks, they have a few good players in their arsenal, in fairness. Mark Rossiter is a decent player. Got Paul Hughes as well. A few good footballers. I mean, look, is my knowledge there with Wexford football? Absolutely not. But it's weird with Wexford. Like they, In my opinion, they're clearly good enough to play Division Three football. 
they've they've proven that with some of the results and some of the wins they've gotten in the last couple of years. But consistency is a big factor. And with Wexford, you never know what type of Wexford is going to show up. They could easily go out and beat Offaly, but then they could, you know, get absolutely trashed by Mead in the quarterfinals. Like, in fairness to Wexford, they tend to actually raise their game when they play better teams. You'd nearly be more worried if Wexford were playing Carlo this weekend, to be honest with you. Um, which is weird, because, like, Offaly are clearly a better team than Carlo, but Wexford are just su- such a inconsistent, bizarre team. You never know what you're going to get with them, to be honest with you. Why I would give Wexford a chance, though, is because... Like, Offaly are coming in on the back of two very disappointing results. I mean, they did finish the game against Cavan. Uh, they lost the game quite comprehensively, 2.25 to 2.9, an absolute hammering. They did finish the game with 13 men, but that obviously followed on from a disappointing draw with Leash as well. And look, it has. we are seeing a common trend with some teams who maybe were quite intense throughout the league, went very strong throughout the league, and in provincial championships, coming into their Talchin Cup, look a little bit flat and look a little bit leggy. And for Offaly, they've had a couple of players who obviously have left for the States. They do have a couple of injuries in their team as well. They are reliant on some experienced players in Keen Farrell and the likes of Anton Sullivan. It'd be nice to see Keith O'Neill get back in the side as well. But it's tough for Offaly and they've had a, a couple of disappointing results. However, I think at home in Tullamore, like I, I, Wexford, like they could, they could go and do this and... There's a part of me that nearly wants to predict a Wexford win. But I think, after all, like I've been quite sort of kind to Offaly this year in my predictions. I think I've predicted them to get to the final of this competition. I'm not ready to just completely flip-flop and back what would be a big upset. You know, Wexford side who struggle to get out of Division 4. As I said, they, they have some good players, but equally they can be off it on any given day. I think Offaly will need a response after the last two results. It's been quite disappointing. They definitely are still a contender for this competition, in my opinion. And I'm going to back them to get the win. I'm going to say Offaly by two points. I've got a sneaky feeling Wexford will start well. They'll build up a lead. They'll be six or seven points up. And maybe Offaly will have a roaring comeback to turn it around. I've got a sneaky feeling this might be one of those games. You just don't know, but... I think Offaly. Offaly should have enough, in my opinion. They are the better team. They do have the better players. It's just whether Offaly can sort of turn around this little mini patch of bad form that they've had in the last couple of games. So I'll go for an Offaly win. You've got Fermanagh versus Leash. Uh, another interesting one as well. I mean, Leash are kind of similar in some ways to Wexford. In some ways, like they're when they're on it, they're, they, they're a very good team. They've got good players in Evan O'Carroll. Paul Kingston's obviously come back in. But they seem to lose the run of themselves. And it does seem that when they come up against a team who are seriously up for it, have a, a will to win, they, they, they Leash do tend to, in a similar fashion to Wexford, have very sort of inconsistent performances. And that draw with London was such a huge blow, in my opinion, because like Leash would have been playing Wexford at home rather than Fermanagh away, in my opinion. I know Wexford actually drew a Fermanagh, coincidentally enough, in the in the group of the Talchin Cup, but I think for, for Leash, like that would that's just a huge blow and like you gotta give credit to London. Fair play to them. They probably could have won the game in the end. For Leash, they should have been winning that game. They should have been winning that game. Like London making the trip over from London obviously. Leash not having as far to travel as London. The form that they'd been in obviously having getting a draw with Offaly. And also with the fact as well that they compete quite well for Cavan for large part. But Leash haven't won a game in the Talchin Cup this year, which is interesting and you like I think going away to Fermanagh look Fermanagh have any injury problems as well Sean Quigley's been in and out Darren McGurran's been in and out but I think they're more than capable at home I think this game will be in Brewster Park they should have enough in my opinion I think Fermanagh at home Ulton Kelm Ryan Lyons Sean Quigley they'll have far too much for Leash let's not forget Fermanagh got out of Division 3 Leash couldn't even get out of Division 4 Fermanagh are the better team here it's up to them to, to go and be the aggressors and win the game Leash will be a tricky test and they certainly won't roll over, but I think Fermanagh will be too strong and I think maybe for Leash, maybe the signs of the season coming to an end were there in the London game, so I'm going to go for a Fermanagh three-point win. Carlo versus New York, as I said before, I mean, who cares about the Champions League final? Uh, I think the Champions League final, to be fair, will be on the same time as the down Longford game, but, you know, why not make the trip to Carlo? instead of what will probably be a boring Champions League final, in all honesty. So Carlo, New York, I mean, look, what a, what a story for Carlo. I mean, they have been the story of the Talchin Cup so far. I mean, to get 
to this stage going in as one of the seeded teams in a group that I predicted them not to get out of. I thought they'd finish bottom. Fair play to Carlo. And, you know, you would expect Carlo to win this game, in all honesty, with New York making the trip over. Obviously, New York aren't used to playing here in Ireland. Um, they have actually, this is the third time now they'll have made the trip over, obviously having played Sligo earlier in the year. And uh, obviously last year they made the trip to, to play Offaly as well. So New York have a bit of experience maybe now more so uh, than they would have in, in, in previous times. And look, to, to be fair to New York, they do have good players. Like Shane Carty around the middle, very good player. We've seen the work he done against Leitrim. Uh, Adrian Vardy, very tricky forward on his day, can be a tough test for anyone. Mikey Boyle uh, in there as well. Um, and a manager who knows how to set them up right. So... I think like this will be a, an interesting one for Carlo because Carlo are so used to being the underdogs. They're always the underdogs in almost every game that they play. Whereas now they're going to be the favourites. And there might be an element of pressure on Carlo similar to what we've seen when Leitrim played New York. You'd imagine New York will sit in, dig deep, be tough defensively. And it will be a different type of test to Carlo that they've probably not experienced any time recently, to be honest with you. So yeah, like I, I, don't, I don't think a New York win here is is inconceivable and there is a part of me that nearly feels like it could actually happen to be honest with you but I think for Carlo look they're coming in with a big amount of momentum Dara Foley's looks looked excellent I mean he's been there for a good couple of years Jamie Clark, Calm Hutton who was very recently actually playing for Ballymun Kickhams in the Dublin Club Senior Football Championship another very good player actually in fairness so I, I, like I think Carlo should have enough the, like I think New York it's a long time without playing a match like with New York there's just so many unknowns like how would they have prepared for this game like on like with the Leitrim game they know they have that game months in advance so they can do so much preparation they would have only find, found out about getting Carlo a couple of weeks you know literally at the weekend so like it, it I, I just think Carlo will have too much I'm going to go for a four point win for Carlo it'd be interesting to see though I think New York like if they do sort of set up defensive and try and frustrate Carlo I think they might have a chance here, but I am going to say Carlo will have enough and win by four. And last but not least, depending on where you're from, we have Down against Longford, which is happening in Newry, obviously, on Saturday evening. I suppose just to remind people, Carlo, New York, Down versus Longford, both live on GA Go on Saturday. It is interesting because obviously, as people would have seen with the match day vlog, I was at the Mead Down game and Down were very poor. 17 wides in total. I was very disappointed with them. They scored a goal and three points in the second half. Like, and Longford, in fairness, a very disappointing defeat to Carlo. Like, it looked like Longford had finally turned the corner under Paddy Christie, and then they had a loss like that. And look, Carlo have done very well. There's no shame in losing to Carlo. But when you look at it, like, Longford, they, they like, they should have done better than they did in that game, in my opinion. With Pat Havern, Oren Murdoch, who's came in from the under-20s, and Liam Kerr, it looks like a good footballer as well. Down should be too strong, in my opinion, but... Like, Down were so poor against Mead. They were very, very poor. I think there has to be a response. I think for Conor Laverty and for Down, if they lose this game, all of a sudden you would look at their season and think, has there actually been tangible progress? The win versus Donegal was obviously a big win for Down. Like, they finally won a game in the Ulster Championship against, you know, one of the sort of contenders. Would you say Donegal were a contender? Probably not, but it was still a big, big win for Down, in fairness. But you would look at it and think, didn't get out of Division 3, you know, finish mid-table, like, and then losing to Longford, it would be a massive, massive setback, but I think down at home in Newry, I think Longford, just clearly, uh, there's a lot of inconsistency there, I think Longford maybe just probably want the season to end now, to be honest with you, I think for Paddy Christie, it hasn't been a good year, I think at the same time, you would look at it and think, obviously, he, he's trying to build something with Longford, would Longford fans even want him there next year, like, I think he is a good manager he's a good record but sometimes you see what Paddy with, with managers sometimes they can be good coaches they can be good men behind the scenes but are they good as the main man as a manager it's hard to know sometimes and I think for Paddy Christie and for Longford it'll be definitely something they'll need to think about going into next year I think ultimately though I am going to back down for the win it, like this could be a hammering if Down are on it and if they're up for it they could really blow Longford out of the water but Down were very poor as I said against me their shooting was very very bad and that's what does worry me ever so slightly but I'm going to go for a 5 point win for Down I think they will be just a bit too strong in my opinion moving on to the all Ireland minor football championship then as I said we have some quarter finals taking place this weekend um, now we'll be honest we'll just go with some quick four predictions here because the uh, the knowledge other than Dublin and probably Kildare as well because I watched that 
uh, Leinster final a couple of weeks ago um, is probably you know the knowledge really isn't there to be honest with you so um, so yeah take, take these predictions with a pinch of salt but Derry against Galway I would go with Derry I think Derry having come through Ulster like beat Monaghan on penalties have looked very good like I remember they, they gave Antrim an absolute beating at one stage as well I'll go with them I think to, to win the game Mayo versus Monaghan um, this is a one a game that to be honest with you I've, I've you know there's probably no point in me predicting this but you know what I, I, I tend to always back against Monaghan so for once I'm going to go for them to win the game and Dublin versus Cork. Now, uh, I suppose Dublin, I guess I am a little bit familiar with obviously being a, a Dublin fan. Um, but Cork are very good at underage. And like this will be a, a tricky test, uh, in my opinion. But I think it's great for Dublin at more level. It's great to see us back sort of out of Leinster and in the All-Ireland Series. Uh, obviously having won the, the Leinster Championship, um, which was obviously great to see. And to be fair, we've got a lot of... Very good up and coming players like Lenny Cahill looks like a good player. Noah Byrne, Paddy Curry, Harry Curley as well. Some good footballers, some good players. And the future does look bright from a Dublin perspective. And with that in mind, I'm going to back us to get the win over Cork. I think we will be too strong. And I think Dublin by three. And Kerry versus Kildare. I'm actually going to go for Kildare to get the win here. Um, I think Kildare have looked very impressive at times this year as well. Like I think Ty Doran. Looks very good, scored one a goal and a point the last day, caused a lot of problems for, for, for that Dublin team. Uh, Darren Mullally, Evan Donnelly, like few good, you know, tricky forwards and Kildare in fairness, like their underage is just not slowing down at all. Um so yeah, I'm gonna back the Leinster province to get the better of the Munster province in Dublin and Kildare. Now, as I said, the knowledge of minor football probably isn't exactly um there just because, you know, there's so many games all the time in both Gaelic football hurling it's impossible to watch every game um but yeah that th they're my predictions take them with a pinch of salt but let me know yours in the comments below so in terms of player of the week and bet of the week um as i said bet of the week like maybe new york beating carlo might be one um i'm not too sure what the odds actually are on that but maybe maybe that's definitely one to try and wexford maybe beating awfully uh could could definitely be one in fairness in terms of player of the week it's a oh, it's a difficult one isn't it i mean keen farrell i think you know, like, could have a huge game for, for Offaly against Wexford. You'd maybe look towards him, Pat Havern maybe for Down, or in Murdoch. Do you know what? I think I'll go maybe with Dara Foley of Carlo. He's been, like, he's a very experienced player in that Carlo side. He was around during the sort of Carlo rising years, shall we say. And I think, if, you know, for Carlo, like, they're going to need, they're going to need an, an experienced head on their shoulders against New York. As I said, Carlo will go in as big favourites, and that's sort of unknown territory for Carlo, in my opinion. So, I think they'll need someone just to, like someone with a, an experienced head who's been in those games, who's able to sort of, you know, navigate the younger lads through a match like this. So I think Carlo will ever so slightly beat New York. And I think Dara Foley will be the player of the week. So yeah, let me know your predictions in the comments down below. Let me know what your opinions are on this weekend's games. Obviously, um, not a huge amount of games in Gaelic football this week. I suppose the attention is definitely more on the Hurland Championship. But yeah, do let me know your predictions for this weekend's games. What games are you looking forward to? Like, subscribe if you enjoy the content and we'll speak to you all soon.